thank you, Allegra, for this kind introduction, and thank you, everyone, for coming. So I want an obvious place to start a conversation about the show is to focus on the title. And talking about restraint, we have to, as I know, the, the concept of the show came second. First came the artworks and kind of selection of artworks. So kind of my first question to you, since restraint has these two sides to it, right? On, on the one hand, it, it's this uh, system of control imposed from outside and domination from outside forces such as patriarchal systems, such as well, different types of authorities. On the second hand, we have restraint. Restraint could be understood as um, self-limitation, self-discipline, self kind of self-control. So I was wondering, as you are creating the works that we see here, uh, which parts of this restraint, the idea of restraint, was important for you? Let's start with you, Sarah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that sort of the dualism of exactly what you just described with restraint speaks really um, like really concentratedly to me in that I'm always thinking about like what I want to push up against but also what's pushing up against me um, and I can only speak from a female body's point of view um, so so for me that means what are the what are the like constraints of womanhood that I feel really strongly and hate, but also sort of love at the same time? Like, what does femininity mean to me? And um, so, yeah, I, I think within these works, talking about the systems of constraint, like every work has sort of a grid system in it that's being pushed up against, or it's right. pushing up against oh, the limitation the body. of the space, or example. limited, like right. pushing really far towards the the. Um, the viewers like in like coming out the towards field, the viewer yeah. um, which feels like uncomfortable but also familiar at the same time so all of those things come into that idea of participating in restraint but also having restraint um, pushed onto you right in what you just described right so, yeah. yeah Rachel <laughs> yeah definitely um, building off of yeah the kind of larger systemic um, and also the personal kind of issues I think a lot about just expectation like what kind of is expected of us and then what is we expect of ourselves and you know definitely kind of tying into the feminine also with this you know in a kind of direct way with like using um, like floral motifs but also um, kind of having them work against themselves and kind of destroying themselves in the process um, so I kind of became interested also in, in restraining my work within things like exercise, like right. machine or like motifs, like the um, this one on the on the right here is this like really medieval looking like hand exerciser mm -hmm. and um, you know I was really also thinking about the term like no pain no gain and the idea that you have to like keep holding yourself to a higher standard, which I feel like also stems from a very like American dream esque right. place, mm -hmm. which is part mm -hmm. of the systemic kind of understanding. Absolutely, of the <laughs> yeah. And building on what you said in terms of the bodies and kind of restraining the bodies, um, we see a lot of eroticism, if not sexuality, within the show. And eroticism has this idea of you know something is there, but it's uh, it's imagined, it's partially imagined, it's partially there, right? So it plays with this kind of cerebral part of our brains and the bodies. So. Mm -hmm. How, what does the role, what's the role of sexuality and eroticism within your practice when you think about this kind of bodies within the space, limited space, restrained space? I actually don't feel like I have any interest in eroticism, which is so funny because I, people really want to, right. to see, to see yeah. because um, of objectified Exactly. Body, right? So yeah, yeah I, I, um, I think about this all the time. Right. And that's why I wanted to ask you, is it something that, that we as viewers put there or is it, is it pushed so. by the society? I think so. And it, yeah. I don't exactly know the mechanism of why that happens. Um, the example that I use in trying to explain this is like, 
I don't get out of the shower and see myself naked and go, right. ooh, erotic. Right. Like, and I need I to just... paint this, and I need to paint this, right? Yes, yeah. it's just a body right. to me. And I, I think also when we go to museums, we see, let's say, nude sculptures. We don't talk about eroticism right. in seeing those bodies. We talk about the classical nude or figure, form, how it's made. And um, somehow we can't bring that same level of either removal or respect to a nude female body when it's made in a contemporary right. work. Um, I don't know exactly why that is, um, but yeah, I don't really see so much eroticism in my work. I see what it violence. feels like <laughs> violence, <laughs> but maybe even love, sensuality, maybe More. in in yeah. that it in I'm interested in the way bodies feel or or touch right. specifically, but eroticism feels performative, and these these bodies to me feel private, mm -hmm. I guess, or like self-examining in a personal way, not in a um, giving a, a oneself or um, trying to show your body to someone else in a way that elicits uh, any kind of sexual response. response. Yeah. 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 yeah, I feel that. I, I feel like I got to eroticism kind of like by accident or by incident, just like as a byproduct of, you know, feeling like these sculptures are anthropomorphized because they're moving and, um, you know, it's like sometimes you make something and you just, you're like, oh, a, like, of course, like this is like right. part of the work. Um, same with, with humor, like I'm not there to like tell jokes just with my word, but yeah. it always like ends up kind of like permeating out of the work anyway. And yeah, like I think there's definitely, I've kind of leaned into that where it, like these floral stems feel like limbs or something and they're kind of, I don't know, being like splayed out. Right. And um, I always say that like if I make something and it makes me kind of blush when I like, mm -hmm. when it like starts going in the studio, like I'm going in the right direction. Um, but yeah, I kind of, again, like it's, um, it wasn't like the direct intention of the work, but it was like very like revealing of how I feel like just, like I grew up really religiously and um, you just have, feel like I had a different relationship to my body. And so right. um, it's, uh, it's kind of fun to, to see it come out in the work. Um, and in one of your interviews, uh, you mentioned this idea and this feeling of cosmic solitude, loneliness that you sometimes felt growing mm -hmm. up in a traditional kind of uh, um, society and fam family that had religious background, right? So I wanted to ask you, how does this kind of, um, this relationship and growing up in a rigid system is uh, connected to the works that you show, you're showing here, right? Which have all of this uh, appliances of self-care mm -hmm. that are kind of, uh, that you project character upon. How, how, how is this connected to each other? For sure, yeah, I feel like when, um, like that kind of like person to person connection can be really difficult, I feel like, I see more and more of ways you can like kind of buy appliances or like, you know, use social media or like, you know, find ways to be able to like be still and alone in like your room or your home, but then like kind of feel connection to to others and, and also like the failures. I think the, the kind of gaps where, um, you know, the machine doesn't quite do exactly what like a human touch right. would do. Like these are all like labeled as like shiatsu massagers and they, um, Tell part, us the titles yeah. again, because titles are very important part of this works as well. Voluptuous <laughs> panic, panic is one. Sexy but not joyous. Yes. Um, this, yeah. And then endure is uh, yeah. the, the bigger guy in, or bigger gal in the back. But um, and the titles already have the humor in them because mm -hmm. you look at these appliances that are kind of objects, right? That stand mm -hmm. for yeah. Humor and it's kind of silly. Like you, you buy this thing from like a Brookstone or like from you know these you spend some money and they have these like kind of rubbery knobs on them right. that kind of rotate and. Um, I mean, an inherent process in my work is buying all of these massagers secondhand um, because I think they're, I don't know, that it just became part of the narrative of the work that, you know, people would buy them and then, this you know, part. try to yeah. either like, you know, donate them to a thrift store or like, you know, sell them and, you know, recoup some money. And 
um, you know, I, I would meet with these people and do transactions, and you know, they'd be like, "Oh, it's so great! You like turn on it, it like heats up, it's like so comforting." And right. I'd be like, "You know, so why are you getting why rid of it?" And they're yeah. like, "Yeah, I just don't use it." Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "Yeah, like I don't know. You kind of um, your uh, capacity for desire for like you know things just like runs out." And um, I, you know, in kind of the realm of expectation that I mentioned earlier mm -hmm. it's kind of like you expected a job or performance from something and mm -hmm. eventually it just didn't make the cut right um, mm -hmm. yeah and I think there's there's something kind of yeah deeply like sad and also very relatable about that relatable and ritualistic as well and mm -hmm. it's also interesting to see how you use fake flowers right as mm -hmm. the stand-in for nature and natural bounty and kind of natural world mm -hmm. right as part of this interaction yeah I'm, i you know i love plastic flowers because they um you know they're they're, they're durable enough to do right. things that I, I have them do but also because there's um something about you know having to to signal like the perfect like form of something mm -hmm. like you, you wouldn't make like a fake flower that's like half wilted or right. like mm -hmm. yeah. or like you know the the bald orchid stem that yeah. is a, you know mm -hmm. kind of a transition period and something about having to like perform um perform perfection through plasticity is right which also talks about our society as we expect perfection right at least visual perfection from totally. things so yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah, just I also wanted to ask about your upbringing in, in the South, mm -hmm. and um, I read that it meant a lot to you, and it kind of it, it informs in a way what you're doing, as far at least ribbons and silk yeah. and some uh, attributes go. Because in one of the interviews you mentioned how you love and hate them at the same mm -hmm. time, and how it reminds you to this idea in the South, and I mean not only but um, how girls were dressed up as presents. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit how this informs your practice? Yeah, um, so where I grew up in South Carolina, I suspect it's like this in many other places right. in the South. Of course, it's not limited to it, but yeah. just, yeah, um, it's your experience. Yeah, the gender roles were just extremely well-defined. And down to like types of fabrics or color or, um, like plaid, for instance, was um, this sort of signal of being a like proper old-fashioned little girl. Mm -hmm. um, we called it gingham, um, and yeah, and like bows, these gigantic hair bows. And my God, love them. But my sisters <laughs> with little girls are still doing it, and the bows have only gotten bigger over time. No. I cannot explain why. Um, <laughs> because maybe it's threatened, they feel threatened by the outside maybe. world. Maybe. So it usually it yeah. shows up somewhere, right? It's, it's, yeah. it's yes, it's unavoidable. <laughs> right. um, even like putting kids in like silks or satins fabrics that have a desire to be touched, mm -hmm. you wouldn't do that with a young boy, it's, it's all of these like teeny tiny micro moments right. of describing femininity and well maybe this is where it comes in, sexuality. That because we're molded young, into this, mm -hmm. you know, this being this objects, right? Yeah, and, yeah. Um, no and wearing pearls has right. its own significance of like virginity and purity or being like sort of a proper woman. Adornment. And, exactly. Right. Um, and so many of these things, I honestly, so many of them, like the pearls, I never saw until I got to college. And there was this uniform that women were wearing that I kind of didn't understand because I grew up in the rural South. So I had a little bit of exposure to it, but not really the formal stuff till I got to college. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? They're <laughs> all dressed the same. Um, and, uh, and I found it curious, interesting, and I hated it, all of these things at the same time. And I didn't really know, my paintings then got like really sexually graphic, and I think that was my way of bucking Protest. the system. Yeah. <laughs> and so since then, I've had, some, I've had some time and about 20 years of growth um, to look back and think like, what, what was that? How is this all connected? Um, how is 
like religion tied into it. I was really interested to hear what you just said about being from a religious family. I was not really from a religious family, but a very religious surrounding system, right? system yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, like we did not, times we went to church, we did not wear pants. Mm -hmm. Like that. Kind well, of yeah, thing. when you go to church, you don't wear pants. Yeah. yeah. The same I mean, in Georgia, actually. Yeah. God you forbid. Just, or you don't go. <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You can't right. let society know that you have two legs. For you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, right, I, I don't. So, right. all of those things um, are just so deeply fascinating and frustrating at the same time. And I still find myself wanting to wear like pretty dresses and right. it's I can't escape the system that I love and yet all I want to do is point to it and say I hate you so much right. <laughs> and I, I think if I had some resolve to these feelings I wouldn't need to make these paintings anymore so I'm also thankful for it that it provides a lot of um, a lot of fertile ground for right. introspection. <laughs> I do remember um, really uh, loathing when Easter came around yeah. because my mom would like make me put on like a white frilly dress and yeah. like you know gender weird feelings aside like it was like so itchy right. and like yeah. you know it was like corset <laughs> level torture but mm -hmm. it was like you know it was like this slow burn like I was yeah. just like riding around in, in church because I hated it so much because oh, yeah. also your father was a is a pastor right yeah. And yeah, I think growing up as a queer person within this kind of frigid society, I could imagine. Mm -hmm. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like it was less about kind of like decoration or being like, there was nothing like ornate about like our Protestant, like, mm -hmm. you know, Korean Amer or Korean church, basically. Um, but it was it was much more about like the roles, like there's something watching my mother be a pastor's wife was mm -hmm. really hard because I, it just requires like being like just visible enough and like but not know, visible piano, more than being most pleasant yeah. mm -hmm. and you know I could see the ways that my mother would like resist that and it was like frustrating for my father because it looked like she was misbehaving because mm -hmm. it's like you know she didn't want to like stand up there and like smile and right. you know she just wanted to be left alone like to, yeah. you know which is so fair and um you know, I don't think I got nearly as much pressure being like a pastor's daughter or pastor's kid, but there was still kind of, um, you know, again, like an expectation that you're gonna be mm -hmm. good. Yeah, you need um, to be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. indoctrinated mm -hmm. into it. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask in terms of the violence that is sometimes hidden in the here, mm -hmm. um, in the paintings as well as the sculptures. And I know, for example, for a, you started with soft sculptures. Can you tell us how you transitioned and what kind of made you think in the direction of this handheld appliances? And if violence and kind of work, working, a need to work with this theme was one of the kind of uh, premises for it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's funny. Yeah, I started like right after undergrad. I was more kind of making like these soft sculptures of like furniture that would, you know, not be able to stand up. And there was something really like pathetic about that and like right. animated, but also very, um, I don't know, like brought up like sympathy. Like when you see something that's like been like knocked over, it's kind of you know, sometimes you're like saying, like, I feel that, um, and, and kind of moved towards these uh, kinetic works as a way to kind of accentuate that, that personality and to, yeah, I'm like kind of really interested in the gap between like sympathy and, and, um, and pity. Uh, but the, I don't know, there's something really interesting about the soft sculptures, which is um, that they're much stronger than, than rigid yeah. sculpture because they can like take a beating like mm -hmm. I like they can absorb the trauma I mean I was mm -hmm. often like you know shoving things in my car or, like you know putting like I would move them to a show and like put them in a garbage bag and like mm -hmm. <laughs> it looked kind of sketchy sometimes but like um <laughs> but yeah and there, there was so much like resilience to, to softness and mm -hmm. I feel like the, the the fake flowers also have that too like they have some bend to them they're you know made out of like plastic or um like cloth sometimes that's like uh, heat pressed into these petal shapes but um yeah like there's always um 
an inherent level of destruction mm -hmm. um, and, and violence and it's it's like self afflicted too but it's also it's um, it's slow like I, I really think about the feeling of you know something eating away at you mm -hmm. um, which yeah like I don't know is, is closer to kind of how I, I experience you know things like um, the patriarchy etc cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, because it kind of, we have, we feel the grind every day, right, in different forms. Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah, I want, uh, had a question in terms of what I read uh, in one of your interviews about your trips in Italy, how this kind of violent imagery of Catholicism that you saw mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. presented in visual arts, much more than it's presented here mm -hmm. in the U.S. also, probably because of the Protestant roots of this country and of the society. And if this kind of preoccupation with uh, the sin, that it's part of Catholic Catholicism mm -hmm. and kind of this uh, philosophy prompted you into your new direction as an mm -hmm. artist, looking at this heritage. Yeah, well, thinking about the time that I've spent looking at mostly work in, um, in churches around Italy, some in France, um, they're so open with graphic violence. Like right. there are people being flayed, like this blood is mutilated, spurting, yeah. mutilated. Right. It's right limbs cut there. Off. Yeah. Yes, I, right. it's limbs, breasts cut off right. and like served on uh, serving heads trays, well. heads. Yeah, I, yeah <laughs> never, I'm gonna send you the, well, the um, breasts <laughs> cut off imagery right. in a church in Rome, I think. Um, it is, it's so unapologetic right. and I love well, it. Well, it's there for a reason. <laughs> yes, it's there, it for, a there for a reason. right? Yes, to, it's not just Make you think twice about some mistakes. <laughs> yes, right. but it's so, it, I think there's something, I'm, I didn't grow up Catholic, but I think there's something about Catholicism's like leaning into sin, Right. There, that everything is, on the surface, you are a sinner, you will sin, it's talk so about it. By default, you are a sinner. <laughs> exactly. And your life is kind of, needs to be a fight against that, right? right. This is right. part of the religion. There. So there, yeah. in that way, there is no restraint. It's, yeah. um, it's like, put it all out there, and you're the worst, and right. we all accept this, um, which is so different from like the, the quiet, um, Resilience that is he part of the culture here, right? Yeah, yeah. But, or the secretiveness. Yeah. Right, yeah, that, 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 really that's the, yeah, yeah, of being... That is the continuum, the other part of it. Yeah, yeah sure. it makes me think of, like, the Utah is the state that has the biggest porn consumption because of all the Mormons. You know, it's like <laughs> right. the more you push something down, the more right. it's going to spurt out of the edges and... In some it grotesque is, ways. Yes, right. in grotesque ways, but ways that are um, actually probably so much worse than mm -hmm. just putting it out there right. as, as this Morally. like profound sure. sin in violence. And um, yeah, that really speaks to me as someone from the South where it was like, shh, you know, we don't talk, we don't talk about right. those things. Um, it's not table talk, as my mom would say. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, it just it just has made me so much more interested in um, honestly like violence and the things that we aren't allowed to see or talk about or do. Um, and I think for women, it, the like spurting around the edges comes in the form of um, self harm mm -hmm. and self abuse, self -abuse. different types of depressions and so on. Mm -hmm. okay, exactly, and yeah. that runs the gamut of like the little cuts you get on your legs from shaving, which mm -hmm. I'm, this is why I'm so interested in the bathroom and hygiene. Right. And yeah, I wanted to ask you this. Why, yeah. why the specific locations too? Yeah. So thank you for bringing well, that up. Yeah. It's about like, you know, women's, women's hygiene is this huge industry that is right. so Multi-million dollars too. Yeah. <laughs> right, like you should not be using any of these products. Right. <laughs> it's, your bodies are fine. They're totally normal, and even the things that we do to ourselves to maintain some pretend ideal of what's um, of what a good body is is mm -hmm. in itself a form of violence. Right. Um, and the role of 
of blood in art history, but also our bodies. Yeah. Like you bleed a profound amount every month if you have a right. menstrual cycle. Um, Which was a taboo for a long time. Too, you couldn't talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Right. And, but yet 51% of the world at some point will experience something like that. Right. Maybe, probably. Um, and we don't talk about it. So I'm, I'm really interested in blood. I loved seeing the paintings in Europe because it was like, oh, it's on the table. Mm -hmm. You know, now we can talk it's about part it. Part like of the conversation. Yeah, yeah the spurting of blood from Christ's wounds is, and all also it does have an erotic element to it. But it's <laughs> like <laughs> it's, everything is just right there for you. And I think the more. Um, people don't want to talk about these things, the more interesting they are. And, and so it makes me want to talk about it in terms of what does it mean um, to be a woman thinking about violence and the violence that we do to ourselves, that it's physical, it's mental, emotional. Um, so yeah, that was sort of a coming together moment for me. I'm still chasing that high every time I travel. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find those cut off boobs on a tray right. in a church. Um, and I found a few. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're out there. <laughs> um, what What do you feel um, in terms of? I wanted to ask you about surrealism. You know, it's because this has been such a resurgent kind of movement. And I know we just talked a little bit about this. It was part of the thesis, as you mentioned, yeah. <laughs> when you were finishing up um, your uh, MFA program. But what do you think about it in terms of your practice? Is it something that is kind of uh, you feel this is part of the tradition you're working on or you're working against that tradition this idea of conflict between object and subconscious mm -hmm. images mm -hmm. Do you wanna... yeah i mean yeah I, I hadn't thought about it until until you brought it up and um yeah, I think it's, uh, I don't know, I think it's in that conversation too, like right. when I kind of think broadly about surrealism, um, and apologies to like my art history professors if I'm gonna botch this, but like, yeah, it's like the kind of, the, like you said, analysis right. of the self through these kind of metaphors. And um, yeah, I like, I use these kind of like symbols and these loaded objects and objects of history, but also um, kind of at the, at the basis of that, I really think I'm, um, you know, thinking about social relationships and, and how people treat mm -hmm. objects and how that reflects on how they treat people. Mm -hmm. And um, I think a lot of that um, has revealed itself to me. Again, like the same thing with like eroticism, like it wasn't the, the, the starting point, but it, right. it just but it like- led there. Yeah, yeah. it just like yeah. circuitously like, came around and, and made a lot, it was like looking in a mirror and I was like, right. oh, okay. <laughs> because it's also interesting to consider when you think about surrealism how traditionally when it started mm -hmm. as a movement in Paris how women were excluded right mm -hmm. and how now they're kind of becoming this part of bigger conversation mm -hmm. just yeah. yeah yeah I don't think I really identify as being right. part of that that, that. Surrealism. Yeah. But now we have a different type of Yeah, surrealism. and I just yeah. wish there was a different word. It's that it. word yeah, is I agree kind with of you. Uh, yes, I would agree with default. you. By yeah. And I understand, but it's like a, it's like a super realism right. or a something, something, it, I think it's closer to making work about how it feels to be in a body right. rather than, like, I'm not interested in, hearing about anyone's dreams right. or yeah. the, it's the worst. Um, but y'all remember your dreams. I, it's, it's so boring. Um, yeah, but so where, where surrealism like came about, that the like Freudian right. moment that was happening, I, it was so... It all started with his mother. Yes. So, yeah, it was so... I, I, I like the imagery that came out of it in just a pure aesthetic way, but... Um, I think what's happening now with specifically women who are making this work, um, or women, queer people, non-binary people, um, is that I think we're we're interested in the human body in a non um, in a non-literal sense, 
and it's come... Some people called it po post-humanism already, right? Right, so yes. So this is one, maybe one of the ways to approach it. Yeah. In, in the age of AI and disembodied kind of yes, presence, Yes, where like right? nothing is quite real right. yeah. anymore. And, and we are in the, in the crisis, reality crisis, right? What is yeah. reality now? It just, it, it also becomes a question now. Yeah, <laughs> and like way. all the AI gem generated images right. is like that's surrealism right it is surrealistic yeah, yeah at so least in the original <laughs> meaning of this term as it yeah. was created yeah. yeah and i think <laughs> like women examining their own bodies or like looking at okay what is a body anymore right. and what is gender and gender it. Yes. as it is i mean it's right. it's this concept that doesn't really reflect the reality yeah right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's more but, but about do you like, think Rachel, yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like to me it's more about like, yeah, like evoking a feeling as opposed mm -hmm. to like kind of representing it, mm -hmm. like in, in the kind of traditional yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's like fun to kind of like, like come with these terms like post human and I don't know because yeah. it's, right. it's like we're trying to name it as it's happening or yeah. it's in my studio and I'm just like I don't know what's the right yeah. you're yeah. just working with yeah. that yeah. Yeah. Uh, and going back to this again to the restraint and kind of this narrative of it um, do you see yourself as artists who work against some part of it this the system at least of restraint putting your practices against the system and where do you see yourself going with it moving mm -hmm. forward? I think, um, yeah, I think to make anything new is to, or that you feel like is new, is to push against a system that's already been in place. Like, to, I think to be nervous about anything you've made is probably a good feeling because it's. It, it means you are creating something untested, right? Yeah, and something this is untested. The nervousness comes from exactly, usually. and so it's any system is by nature going to be restraining, and um, so there's like the studio practice making something that's new, that's pushing against like it, what is this? Um, so that's a kind of personal level of restraint in the making process, but then there's also restraint in talking about or an act of counter restraint and talking about things that you feel like you've not heard anyone talk about before that's important to you or that's really personal or that's challenging or embarrassing um, and uh, or talking about something that you're angry about like I'm pretty angry <laughs> in a right. lot of in a lot of these paintings and I get to spend many many hours making them and um, it's it helps the it helps the feelings of anger uh, about any of these systems we've talked about. So I think it's a matter of like starting from a, a feeling of being restrained or constrained, and then working and yourself raging out yourself of, out of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we all need yeah. some rage from time to time, mm -hmm. right? So it's yeah. it's healthy. Yeah. 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 How about you, Rachel? What do you think in this terms? Yeah, I think maybe something I, I kind of struggle with um, subconsciously is, uh, tr you know, trying to make the work both specific and broad at the same mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe one of the kind of constraints um, is kind of this conversation around, like, identity politics. And, mm -hmm. and um, I don't know, not to, like, say anything about that, but necessarily, like, my own way of navigating through it because I don't, like, like represent my body, like I don't want my body to be in my work and in a way I'm very kind of protective about parts of my culture and family that I don't necessarily want to just like put off on display. And so um, again, that's why like kind of evoking feelings is important because there is this kind of like outer layer that I, you know, would hope is something more people can relate to while coming from like a deeply private and personal place mm -hmm. um, without necessarily having to, um, I don't know, like use like the aesthetics of like Korean culture or something right. necessarily or like putting crosses in my work. Like it's, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I feel like that's kind of a, something I feel like I'm kind of pushing against, um, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Um, what are the next projects that are coming up for you this this year? Uh, well, you have a, a big 
moment I'm, I'm soon. <laughs> I know, great. <laughs> right. so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm working on a thesis, which is happening in like March, which is kind of wild, um, and trying to make some uh, kind of a more lar like larger and ambitious sculpture while I have the space and, and resources, and then uh, figuring out what to do with life afterwards, but I'm um, planning to, to be in Berlin for a few months and um, I don't know, like keep working, put off reality as long as I can <laughs> and have some fun. But uh, yeah, that's kind of like the immediate. immediate it's an important future. year and best wishes for your thesis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Sarah? Um, I am making work towards a solo show that I'll have in October in London at um, Bernheim Gallery, who I've worked with for a few years. Wonderful. So, yeah. What's the title of the show? Do you have the title yet? I have no yet? idea. No. <laughs> I don't know. I usually um, don't know till the end, till all the work is made, then I know. Yeah, that will be. Congratulations. I'm Thanks. looking forward. Do you have any questions for the artists? <laughs> Concerns? Concerns? <laughs> Concerns. Suggestions? Yeah, suggestions. <laughs> yeah, suggestions. Yeah. I have a question, actually. When you, when, did you start from the beginning in choosing your work with, like, all of the things you were noticing about your life in the South and things that have just been probably touching your whole life as well? Like, from the get-go of, like, these are, like, how I want to incorporate everything I got as a child? Or did that come through your journey in the work? I think... Um, I didn't, I think I was making work like that for a really long time, but I didn't know it until I left. And so in undergrad, I was making these paintings with toile, with this like um, decorative fabric um, that then I would paint over top of and make them like really fucked up. And so in hindsight, it's like very obvious what I was doing that I was making, I was taking this like traditional fabric and being like, screw you, I'm gonna, you know, do something terrible to these little figures. Um, and then, uh, yeah, there's, so there's a lineage. And so it's like everything was already there, but only now, I think when I'm speaking about it, when I have distance, I'm looking back, it's like, oh yeah, I know exactly what I was doing, but it took a while to, it's like, therapy you know it's like all always <laughs> in there and then years later you're like oh, hello <laughs> so yeah it's it's always it's always the same <laughs> we never change <laughs> anyone else with the anything <laughs> um okay let me ask you the title question how do you come up with titles because it's always interesting for me i always ask artists this just you curious have, you have better yeah. titles than yeah. me <laughs> titling is really hard for yeah. me like i um and it's probably because i like undermine myself from the start by saying that but um yeah, I, I don't know, like I'm, I'm not good at coming up with like really great like poetic titles or literary <laughs> references and including them. So they come after the work is completed or do they come uh, before? Because For I know sure. it's the different. Titles come like as needed. When as needed. Like, so what's the title <laughs> part? I'm like, right. uh, like, let me get yeah. back to you. Um, I mean, Endure came really, really quickly just because of the way that it's, it's, it's kind of undulating and moving and and also kind of like breaking itself apart too. Um, and actually through these two, I um, was referencing a text that was um, kind of talking about, um, that was bringing in like, uh, oh my God, I'm going to totally butcher this name, Sinai? Cy like the, Cyanide, yeah. Yeah, Cyanide. Category, yeah uh, sure. it's like categories, um, because I, <clears throat> You know, I uh, went into that text thinking about like cuteness and mm -hmm. thinking about if that had any relation to my work. And mm -hmm. then, really, what I identified with most was the zany because of how um, just like awkward like these sculptures move. Like they're mm -hmm. they are based on these really kind of like sensual movements, but right. they end up being because of the extension of the flowers like quite destructive and and strange. And I think that's. Um, you know, I think about the the kind of um, motions of like hysteria or like mm -hmm. you know putting something under so much pressure, like women, right. um, to the, to a breaking point, and how that manifests in this just like completely like 
um, wild movement. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, that was a case where I was kind of pulling, pulling from reference, but... Um, and it's interesting yeah. also the hysteria that also came from the idea of restraint, right? How it was considered mm -hmm, yeah. to only mm -hmm. affect women. Mm -hmm. It really sure. blew, blew my mind when I first read about this mm -hmm. kind of... Yeah, yeah. and I, yeah, I just I think about that too because of, yeah. of the machines I'm working with, they're, they're not designed to last forever. Right. They mm -hmm. have this like, limited lifespan on them and I'm often pushing them past the 15 minute like right. recommended usage time and, <laughs> and and a lot of the times their their resistance to that like labor basically mm -hmm. is to burn out and mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. you know that's, that's something that just is inherently in the work and you know sometimes i'm fighting against it and sometimes i accept it i'm like there's just um you push something too far and it, right. it will then it will fight break. back yeah. or it'll right. resist by Explode. Die. <laughs> yeah, like just, no uh, functioning, so to say. But yeah, sorry, I went on yeah. a, a tangent. Yeah. But. Sarah, how about your titles? Um, this is titled Domestic, and this is. Yeah, uh, Bathtub Tangle. Yeah. Honestly, it's by the just, time I finish a painting, I'm like, this thing's got to get out of here, uh -huh. and you want I to get don't know. Just stop <laughs> looking at it. Yes. That's the bottom. But there line. are some. Like I've started using text in my um, in some paintings, so that suddenly the like language feels much more important. Language mm -hmm. that has this dual meaning of like domestic, the home. Um, you know, thinking about like a, a woman's role in the home, right. like a physical home, or also where I'm from. Sometimes people refer to it. A fight between a couple as they had a domestic uh -huh. and so it's like yeah, all heard, this yeah. terrible yeah. stuff that's wrapped up and yeah. um, so in that sense the language is really important and then I, when I title a show it's mm -hmm. I have to think about that for a long time um, but I always want something that's has this like knife's edge of a dual meaning it's, yeah. You're not quite sure. Right. Yeah, like yeah. maybe two people come at it and they think one person thinks it means one thing, one person thinks it means something else. Like which is part of your works, right? This yeah. Kind of this yeah. open openness. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead. Um, I have a process question, and I'd be curious for both of you. But in terms of planning a work, is it a composition that you have in mind, or how do the materials end up influencing? what the work ends up looking like? Um, <laughs> uh, so I wish I had a really good answer for that question because then I would know how to start a painting all the time. Um, like sometimes it's a composition, sometimes I see something and I'm like, oh yes, that would be an amazing composition. Or sometimes it's a color palette or, um, I make a lot of drawings, so um, sometimes it's like just finding these limbs or this body or something that I know, okay, this has to be in a painting. It's, it's kind of all over the place, and I spend a really long time um, before I make a series of paintings just drawing and thinking and being frustrated and, and yeah, so I, I don't quite have a regular way of doing it. Yeah. Do you? I mean, yeah, sculpturally it feels more um, intuitive, but I, I also consider myself to be like a responsive artist to things that exist. Somebody like was asking like what is something I would never work with and I said clay because it's just um, something like so intuitive. That you need about, to, like, yeah. yeah. I don't like form it myself, whereas I spend yeah. a, like, probably too much time on like Facebook Marketplace, like because it just it just brings you amazing things that people have. <laughs> things. The more you search, uh, the more it gives you. Yeah, there's like, there's more weird things like the algorithm is just like going. But yeah, um, yeah I, I think like objects are just like so inherently interesting. Um, just this, you know, found objects, sought out objects, um, like the yeah, like the car jack, like the the. The hand like strengthening thing, like the the piece in the back is um, constrained by um, one of those frames for like those like spring horse toys, like the kids oh, ride yeah. on. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Something about like the spring kind of like suspending this horse in in uh, midair was. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I was just like I. 
I gotta go get it. And yeah. then, like, you know, hit up this, like, dude who met him in a parking lot. And then mm. he's like, you're just basic. Like, I don't have a kid. I'm just an artist. I'm just an artist. Wow. There, there was a time where I was collecting a lot of baby swings, and oh. <laughs> they'd be like, how old's your kid? And I'd be like, it's for a friend. Like, I don't know. It was, it was your like, car's just filled so up with baby swings in the back. They, like, I mean, especially for the massagers, I would like plan these like routes where I'd pick up like five in a row, and then I would, you know, I'd be like, "Thank you so much. I'm so excited to use this," and then just like chuck it in the back. <laughs> My other like massager corpses. And it's I amazing. Like, they would think I'm like insane. <laughs> but um, <laughs> what was the question? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's just kind of like responding to yeah, like that. For example, like that horse like felt like constrained by its frame and mm -hmm. and. You know, I was like, how do I kind of like translate into that into my own kind of like visual um, like methodology or something? Um, but but yeah, it just it just really comes from like seeing what's out in the world mm -hmm. and um, and reacting to it. In a way. Yeah, yeah, what people are willing right. to get um, get rid of too. I just saw a listing for like this Pilates. Like, <laughs> that, that's I, I still don't know what Pilates is. Right. <laughs> This looked like a like a sex dungeon bed. Like yeah. I was like, okay, like that's Great. really interesting. Just like <laughs> from like you know an outside perspective, I haven't gotten that. I didn't get it, but um, <laughs> but yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> uh, God. Um, thank you so much. <laughs>